fasting is to sharpen your spiritual senses and your spiritual skills. Fasting drives you closer to God and fasting is designed by God and God asks us to fast with the promise of rewarding us. When Jesus himself said to disciples in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 6, he said, when you fast, he didn't say, if you fast. And he said, if you fast in secret, according to what God asks you to do, then he said, God who sees your fasting in secret will reward you openly. So every fasting brings reward for you. Look through the Bible, look through the history. When, when men and women has faced challenges, especially godly men and women, they declared a fast, they sought the Lord, they, they, they went to God in weeping and mourning and fasting, and they always had a victory. Even in some cases when they fasted, like in their country of Nineveh, God relented them from doing harm, and God canceled that disaster which was going to come to them and save them. So even God can change his mind when you really fast and seek him. So there are some people say, you know, whatever is God's will, it will happen. No, there are a lot of things God's will for you, good. But it will happen only when you tune and train yourself in a place where God wants you to stand. You have to train your ears to hear what God has to say. Like, like Habakkuk said, I will, I'll set myself on the rampart and wait to hear what God has to say. You cannot live a lazy, lousy, lethargic life saying that whatever is God's will, let it happen. No, it won't happen like that. Whatever is devil's will, whatever is the result of your laziness and sin will happen when you don't listen to God. If you want whatever God's will to happen, then first thing you must learn to listen. You must learn to hear God. And you must learn to be where God wants you to be. Fasting is most of them, we are repositioning ourselves. Sometimes, you know, we, we leave and we get blessed and we become successful. We get little wings growing and we get little feathers and we start thinking in that we have become somebody. And, you know, we just move away from where God has placed. Remember, whether you become successful or failure, you have to have an attitude, in all the situation, I'll stand for God. If I become rich, I become rich for Jesus. If I become poor, I'm becoming poor for Jesus. I'm here to serve God's purpose. I'm here to fulfill my destiny. So fasting and praying is the time to hear the voice of God. If you turn your Bible to book of I book of Second Chronicles, chapter twenty, you will see a beautiful story from the life of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was a great king. He, he was loved by God and he done a lot of good things. And then came to a stage in chapter twenty. Moabites, Ammonites, and some of the Meonites came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. So three countries coming together again, one small country. Some people came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the Dead Sea. They are already in Hazazon Tamar, that's called En Gedi, Dead Sea. Alarmed, and Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast all through Judah. Now, Look at the condition. Jehoshaphat was the anointed king of God. He had done amazing works. He was doing well, successful, kingdom is settled. He had favor of God, worship is going on, and everything going well. But in the midst of everything going well, bang, there's a big problem. Problem is much bigger than he could manage. So he didn't thought of physical counsel. He didn't look around which king will support me, whom I can make a lie. He all of a sudden he had a problem that three countries are coming together against you and they almost reach to the doorstep. They are very near. 
and they could take Jehoshaphat and his country within no time. The army who came and reported Jehoshaphat, they said it's a vast army like an ocean. There are so much people. So Jehoshaphat knew by his physical strength and his army capacity, he will not be able to win the war. You know, earlier you realize how fragile you are is better for you. Often we fail when we underestimate the power of the enemy. Often we fail when we don't understand where do we stand. Remember, whether I stand or fall, I stand and fall for the Lord. Remember, there is a promise of God, he will protect you. His hand will be with you. Now, Jehoshaphat have a situation, there's a vast army coming against him. And Jehoshaphat did not know what to do. So what did he do? He declared a fast. He proclaimed a fast, said, guys, let's fast and pray and seek the Lord. Now that's what you and me must learn to do. When we have a challenging situation, a situation of bondage, a situation of financial crisis, a situation of sickness and disease, a situation of death, a situation of danger, we need to fast and pray and seek the Lord. Don't go seeking politicians to help you. Don't go seeking some friends to come and support you. Don't go seeking bank to get a loan. Seek the Lord. Seek God. So Jehoshaphat set his heart to seek the Lord. So people of Judah came together, seek help from God, and they came from every town of Judah. They came together, they prayed, and Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Jerusalem, the temple of the Lord, in front of the new courtyard. And he prayed like this, Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not God who is in heaven? You rule over the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. Our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people of Israel and give it to us forever to the descendant of Abraham, your friend? They have lived in it, and they have built in it sanctuary for your name. If the, and you promise if calamity come upon us, whether sword or judgment or plague, or famine, we will stand in your presence before the temple that bear your name and cry out in our distress and you will hear us and save us. Now he quoted the promise of God back to God and said, God, are you not a God who promised to us? Are you not a God who gave us land and saying that he's forever? Now I have a situation. My core existence is challenged. So then then he went on praying at the end of the prayer. He made a, you can read the chapter 20 when you get time. Uh, he, at the end of the prayer, the Lord's Holy Spirit came upon Jehaziel, one of the prophets, son of Zechariah. And this is what Holy Spirit told. Listen, King Jehoshaphat, and all you live in Jerusalem and Judah, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, march down against them. Don't look at their size. Look at God. March down against them till they will be climbing up to the pass of Sis. You will find them at the end of the, the George and desert of Jeruel. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your position, stand firm, and see the deliverance of the Lord he give it to you. Judah, Jerusalem, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. Go out and face them tomorrow. The Lord is with you. Now this is a promise we all heard. And Jehoshaphat bowed down to the ground and worshipped God. And he went down and he did what God said. And God sent an ambush against the enemy. They got split and then disappeared and Jehoshaphat had a greater victory. Amen. So, instead of listening to your mind, listen to God. Instead of listening to all these rumor mongers, I mean, some people are so professionally negative. I am so fed up with them. You know, some people are 
all the time end time false prophet antichrist world is coming to end jesus is coming soon and and they try to define every world event as the end of the time i've been hearing this story for last 40 plus years when i got born again i used to listen to one preacher he preached in such a way that jesus could come tomorrow tonight or tomorrow for sure and i used to be on my toe and i was not working much thinking that what's the point of working what's the point of building anything with jesus is coming soon i better be ready i better be tell everybody jesus is coming soon and i been i was reading his book nearly for one and a half two years then i discovered that this guy is saying the same thing again and again the new masala and they keep adding the world event as the end i remember when gobacho was the president of russia he had a black mark a s mark on his forehead they said that's a sign of antichrist that's a map of the europe and when there was a money crash in 1980s there was a preacher from australia said this is the end of the world money is economy is crashing when 2000 came there was uh, there was a lot of prof preachers that jesus is coming because computer cannot count more than 2000 2000 is the end computer doesn't have a system to count more numbers and a lot of k you know the k some k crisis some kind of thing. every everything now latest is ukraine and russia ukraine is russia is going to take over ukraine america nato is going to war and the end time is coming antichrist is coming the devil is coming the world is coming to an end please don't believe in all this this story this is all just vain imagination there'll be wars and rumors of war always in the world our job is to go and do the work jesus called us to do what is the work jesus called us to do evangelize and make disciples love people help people preach the gospel of course you can preach about the end of the world jesus is coming soon i believe jesus is coming soon i'm ready to go even if he come today or tomorrow or maybe next year or even after 10 years but unfortunately or fortunately i don't know when he's coming so don't believe in all this false focus on what you are called so jehoshaphat had a challenge so he decided to hear god he didn't said this end of the world so he went to god he had a worship time praying seeking god and he stood up and he prayed quoting the promise god gave to king solomon he said god are you not a god who promised that when there's a disaster if we call out in your name if you humble ourselves and you come to the place called by your name you are a god who will hear from heaven and bring a change and his prayer was so good his prayer was a genuine prayer and the holy spirit came on jehaziel not on jehoshaphat god use other people also don't think that only you can be used god's prophet spirit came on jehaziel and jehaziel stood up and prophesied believe in the lord guys you're going to have victory you stand and still and see tomorrow you go for the war don't look at the number of the war army don't count them count you on what you have go out tomorrow take the war you position yourself stand still and see the salvation that god is going to bring but in order to get that salvation there are few things you can see they need to go out they need a faith you have an army against you probably three four or five times bigger than you and your army is small and if you read other portions jehoshaphat really got frightened and he got really scared he went before god falling down and crying and he knew that if god doesn't step in that will be the end you know those days when a king take over another king normally they kill the king and the entire family so jehoshaphat knew this was a life and death threatening situation if god doesn't act i'm going to be in a soup so his prayer was so intense i that's why we need to pray so god said jehoshaphat you go tomorrow go for the war tomorrow don't stay inside go out and see what i'm going to do the enemy whom you see you will not see him you stand still with the faith and god will fight for you so fasting is also a time to hear god 
If you have a situation in your life and you do not know how to answer, you do not know how it's going to evolve, and you have a concern about, or you're scared or worried, the best thing you can do is to go for a fast and pray. Don't get worried and panic and depressed and running around every Tom, Dick and Harry, who will help me, or what God says, running after prophet, to what God says, or what people say, who will help me. Stop all this. Stop all running after. Do what God says. Stand still and see the salvation that God is going to bring for you. The enemy whom you see today, you will not see. Jehoshaphat did what God asked him to do and he had a great victory. So fasting is a time to hear God. Fasting is a time you seek God's face in the midst of crisis. Are you in trouble? Fast and pray. Do you have unresolved issues? Fast and pray. Do you have a situation you can't understand? Fast and pray. Fasting and prayer open your spiritual senses. Fasting is not to change God's will, it's to change yourself. But at the same time, if you fast well, God relents from doing any harm for you. So I encourage all of you to fast and pray. Seek the Lord while he can be found. God bless you.